Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use the Assembly 3 Workbench. And I'm going to assemble this here pair of pliers, um, I guess very basic modeling pair of pliers that uh, I modeled in a previous video a few videos back. So to check and see if you have the Assembly 3 Workbench, you can come over here to your workbenches and see if you have this Assembly 3. And if you don't have it, you can come over here to your Add-on Manager and scroll down here until you find Assembly 3 and click the Install button. Um, I think you've got to restart FreeCAD, but it should come up here. Alternatively, um, you could check out Real Thunder's branch, the FreeCAD Link 3 branch, which I believe comes with Assembly 3 pre-added. So Assembly 3 is a little bit different from Assembly 2 or a kind of traditional assembly manager. Um, you can, I guess you don't necessarily need a separate file. So for this video, I will be inserting um, Assembly 3 directly into the pliers file um, that these pliers are, I guess, parts are stored in. But you could also make a new file and insert an assembly into that. I'll just show you how to do that real fast. So I made a new file and I'll switch over to assembly three. I'll make a new assembly and then I'm going to give myself a link and I'll come down here to the link properties and you can click linked object and I will link this back to the handle. Oops, did not like that. Um, you can see here it uh, did not like it because this unnamed one document is not saved. So I can save as and I will save this one as a demo. And now that we've done that, it should accept this. Okay, and there you go. We've got a link here. And in order to get this part onto the assembly, you just drag it and then it ends up in the assembly. Um, exactly the same as, as if this assembly container was inside of the pliers file. Um, everything should be identical. This is just kind of linking between files in case you had assemblies um, in another file. You can also, I guess, insert assemblies into assemblies you know like you like you normally would um, in like SolidWorks or a proprietary program. Um, FreeCAD can I guess assembly three can do that also. Now I'm gonna close this and sure we'll save it. Uh, sure we'll save those two. And I'm going to file save as this pliers so that I'm not messing with my original pliers file um, because I plan to use it in a video about assembly four also. And we'll call this pliers and then A3 um, to specify that it is assembly three. And then I'm going to insert an assembly into this bit. And I'm actually going to delete these two handles, um, the two like linked handles, because we're not going to need those. And then I will drag my handle and my grabber into this assembly. And actually, maybe maybe I won't do that. And I'll put links there instead. That seems a little bit safer. So I'll do a link of handle twice and a link of grabber twice. And then I will drag all of these into the assembly. And then I'm going to hide the original handle and grabber. And in assembly three here, I should be able to click on a part. And then I'm going to use this move tool to move my part to its approximate location. Um, I don't believe assembly three has a, a way to, you know, flip a mate. Um, the mates are very, I guess, non-traditional. Um, so we'll put that one about right here. And I will move this one. 
So we'll flip him over about like that. You don't have to be super exact with this. And we'll do OK on that. And then we should have duplicates of these guys. So I will move this guy. I'll give him the old flip. And let's see, should have everything um, ready to go here. So now I'm going to use, I'll select this and I'll select that. But actually, before I do that, um, by default, none of these parts in assembly three come in, I guess, is fixed, um, is how you would traditionally describe it. Um, you've got to do that yourself, and you can come up here and use the, let's see, this one, the add a locked constraint for a, I guess, to fix part. Um, and I'm going to fix this one here so that it's the same as the A2 plus model. And in order for this fixed constraint to be like an actual fixed constraint, you have to select a face. Um, if you if you select anything other than a face, it will fix that particular part. Let's say I select this line here, it will actually rotate around that line. And if I select a point, then it will restrict the three degrees of translation, um, but it won't just restrict any degrees of, I guess, rotation. So now that we've got that fixed, we can select these two faces here. And I'm going to do, I guess, the equivalent of a concentric uh, constraint, which is going to be this axial alignment. And then I will axial align the rest of these. But before we do that, I've got to make these two things um, coincident. And assembly three is a little bit picky about uh, how it, I guess, its constraints work. And by that, I mean, you would you would think um, that you could apply a, I guess, a plane to plane coincident constraint, which would be this one here, add plane alignment. But the issue you run into there is that these two planes, I guess this plane alignment restricts them to be parallel and the axial alignment also restricts them to be parallel and even though even though it should um, accept that it, it does not like that because that causes issues so instead i am going to use let's see i believe it is hidden somewhere in here this point in plane um, and that shouldn't i guess mess with our our degrees of freedom that should I guess, constrict it the correct amount. And then we'll do that again a few more times. So here to here, and then point on a plane, and then this guy here to here. And a point on a plane. All right, and then one more time. Awesome. And I'm going to save this. And you can see you don't need a, uh, a point on a plane for this last one because it's already uh, defined axially together. I guess it's it's defined kind of through the axial constraint and then through this axial constraint and plane constraint and then through that axial constraint. So this is already defined parallel or I guess coincident with one another. So now that this is all constrained, we should be done and uh, we should be able to select, let me orientate, should be able to Let's see, make this a bit bigger. Select here and grab the uh, the old rotation button 
and rotate, although it might be easier to use the, the movement button. There you can see our assembly is functional. So that's looking pretty good. Um, there are a few buttons up here that you might be interested in. Um, these toggle smart recompute. Um, auto recompute, obviously, you want on. That is this button here. Um, if you don't have that on, it's not going to recompute. Smart recompute and this experimental feature here. Um, I guess supposedly make it faster. It's difficult to uh, it's difficult to know. I turned them off here, and we can see it is it is definitely slower. Um, but but you know, not much difference. I'll turn them back on, and you'll see it's going to end up a bit smoother. So that's nice. Definitely not as smooth as. Um, like SolidWorks, which uses a, a simplified model as opposed to this, which I seems like it's using kind of more of a, a brute force model. Although, um, to be fair, this is, I guess, a lot more um, free in the way that you can constrain things. SolidWorks has, you know, a few constraints, maybe 10 or 15, whereas this has, you know, probably about 25. So that is the uh, the end of this video. Um, I hope you learned something and feel free to check out the previous video about uh, A2 plus assembly manager and check out the next video about uh, assembly four assembly manager. Although I guess assembly four isn't too much of an assembly manager, but yeah, so I'll uh, I'll end it here.